I know that we have a church that is, is diverse and different age groups, and some of you are in junior high, some of you are a high school student, some of you are college students, and some of you are like me. You, you have already graduated and moved on with life, and how many of you that are in my category, you've graduated from high school already, and you knew someone back in high school that was good looking? Come on, come on. Anybody remember? Did you know anybody back in high school that was fine? The, the, young, the young people call them, she's a baddie. She's a 10. You know, do you know anybody fine back in the day? And then, and then you went to your class reunion 10 years later. You went to your class reunion 20 or 30 years later, and you were talking to your classmates, and, and you, you didn't recognize one of them, and they came up and introduced themselves to you. You was like, say your name again. It's, say your name, say your name. Because I'm, I mean, is that really you? What happened? U G L Y, you ain't got no alibi. You ugly. <laughs> you ugly. Now, you didn't say that out loud, but you were thinking, what happened to you? In high school, I wanted to date you, I wanted to marry you, and I'm so glad I didn't. Come on, lift your hands if that's your testimony. You know somebody back in high school, you're like, woo wee, I'm so glad. We didn't hook up, we didn't get together, we didn't get married because you went from good looking to good Lord. What happened? We don't always recognize people. We can be in their presence and still not recognize them. And that's what I want to talk about today. And, and I, what I've, cause I because I've learned this over 30 years of preaching and, and 22 years in May of pastoring people's church is that People, you don't always recognize them. And people don't always recognize Jesus. I've learned that after 30 years of preaching. People don't always recognize Jesus. People can be in the very presence of Jesus and still not recognize Jesus. And after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there's a story in the Bible where a woman was in the very presence of Jesus, but she did not recognize Jesus. Let's look at this story together at the resurrection in John chapter number 20 and verse number 11. It says, now Mary stood out Outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and, uh, and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, catch this church, at this, she turned away and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize. It was Jesus. She didn't recognize Jesus. And maybe you can relate to Mary. You went to church camp as a kid or a teenager, but you never recognized Jesus. You grew up going to Sunday school or Sunday services, but you don't recognize Jesus. You've heard preachers talk about Jesus, but you've never recognized Jesus for yourself. You've sung worship songs, you've read Bible verses, but you don't recognize Jesus. How can people hear about Jesus, sing about Jesus, be in the very presence of Jesus and miss seeing Jesus? Today, I want to give you three obstacles that cause people to miss Jesus. We learned this from this story. We learned this from Mary. And the first obstacle that causes people to miss Jesus is your emotions can cause you to miss Jesus. It says in John chapter 20 and verse number 13, they asked her, woman, why are you crying? Notice she's crying. Why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put 
him. Mary did not recognize Jesus because she was clouded by her emotions. She was full of sorrow because Jesus had just died a horrific death. And with only memories and lost hope, she went to the tomb to grieve. And Jesus' body was gone. Her Lord was gone. She thought somebody had stolen the body of Jesus. She was overcome with emotion and she started crying. Mary was looking for death at the tomb. And her tears blinded her from seeing life at the tomb. She was overwhelmed with mourning and she missed the fact that she should have been rejoicing. Her feelings were drowning out the facts that Jesus was alive. And just like Mary today, there are many people who are overwhelmed with emotions and they can't recognize Jesus. Maybe that's where you find yourself this Easter. Your past pain has blinded you from seeing Jesus. You've been so focused on your own anxiety, you're missing Jesus. You're consumed with feelings of hopelessness and depression or worry or grief or anger or loneliness or bitterness and you're missing Jesus. Jesus is close by but you're overwhelmed with emotions that you don't recognize Jesus. Emotions can keep people from recognizing Jesus. A second obstacle is your disappointment can cause you to miss Jesus. Notice back in the story in John 20 and verse 15, he asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him. And Mary arrived at the tomb and she expected to, to see the tomb closed with the stone. She expected Jesus to be behind the stone, but the stone had been rolled away and Jesus was not there. She was disappointed because she didn't understand the plan of God. She had a wrong expectation of Jesus. She thought Jesus was dead. And some of you can't recognize Jesus because you have a wrong expectation that is leading to disappointment. And what I've learned is disappointment can hinder you from seeing Jesus. Some of you today, you're disappointed because of the death of a loved one. Pastor, if God is really real, why do they die so young? You're disappointment, disappointed about one of your children and where they are in life. I mean, if God was really at work in the earth, if there was really a God, Pastor, my kids would be doing better. They'd be making better decisions. They would be making better choices in life. You're disappointed today because you, you can't get pregnant or because... You're having major marriage problems. You're disappointed because you got fired from your job or, Pastor, why would God allow me to lose my job? You're disappointed because you thought you'd be married by now. Some are disappointed because of a, a horrible doctor's report. You have cancer. You have some rare disease. You have a terminal illness. Pastor, where is God in the middle of this sickness? Why won't he heal me? You're disappointed because you never expected to be where you are in life. You thought God had a plan and a purpose for your life, and nothing is working out for you. And next Sunday, I can't wait to preach next Sunday. I've been working on this next series of messages for quite some time and praying over them. And I'm starting a new series next Sunday called Stay in Your Lane, Preparing for Your Purpose. Please hear me today. God truly did create you on purpose and for purpose, even if you don't feel like it. And next Sunday, if you will be here and allow me the opportunity to journey with you over the next several, several weeks, I'm going to teach you how to live out your God-given purpose, the purpose that God has for your life. Some of you, you're disappointed because it doesn't look like God has answered your prayers. You've been praying and praying and praying about a situation or 
a circumstance or a person, and nothing has changed. Matter of fact, things seem to be getting worse. And just like Mary, disappointment can cause you to miss seeing Jesus. You can miss the kindness of God because of disappointment. You can miss recognizing the grace and mercy of God because of disappointment. You can miss recognizing all the blessings that God has poured out in your life. Disappointment causes so many people to miss seeing Jesus. Number three, the third obstacle is your confusion can cause you to miss Jesus. Not only was Mary overwhelmed with emotions, not only was she disappointed, but she was confused. Mary said in John chapter 20 and verse 15, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go get him. Mary had a picture in her mind of where Jesus should have been. She was confident he was dead and his body was at the tomb. And when Jesus wasn't where she thought he should be. And Jesus did not look the way that she thought he should look. He, she was confused. She said, tell me where you have put the image of Jesus I'm looking for and I'll go get him. And today, many people are confused about the image of Jesus they're looking for. The version of Jesus that, that people have pictured in their mind is keeping them from seeing the real, true Jesus of the Bible. People are confused today. People are confused because their version of Jesus would not allow all of the horrible suffering that we see in our world. People think Jesus can't be God, at least he's not a good God, because there's so much pain, there's so much suffering, murder, rape, hatred, racism, greed, cheating, genocide in our world. Let me say this to you. It's important that you understand that the existence of pain and suffering doesn't mean that there is not a loving, all-powerful God. Just because you and I don't understand all the ways of God doesn't mean there isn't a God. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter number 11 and verse 5, as you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Just because you and I don't understand everything doesn't mean that, God, that there isn't a loving God. Listen, church, we can't limit and confine God to our own thinking. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And we will never fully understand the ways of God. And there are some people who are confused because their version of Jesus would not allow bad things to happen to good people. They think if Jesus is, is God and there's a really a God, then things, bad things shouldn't happen to good people. And they get confused about Jesus because people can start to think that following Jesus should shield people from experiencing bad things. But that's just a wrong picture of Jesus. The biblical Jesus said this. The real Jesus said this in John chapter 16 in verse number 33. He says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you, everybody say the next word, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus said to his disciples, he said to his followers, following me does not exempt you from pain and heartache. They would experience, he said, you're going to experience trouble in this world. Because Adam and Eve sinned in the garden way back in the book of Genesis. In this world, there's sin, there's suffering, there's pain, there's evil in our world. We all experience it. I love Jesus. I follow Jesus, and my mom still died in her 50s. My brother died in his 40s. I prayed for God to heal my dad of cancer. And my dad died, and I preached his funeral in December of 2022. Right now, my family is facing some health challenges. People lie on me and have hurt me. But just because bad things happen to me, 
doesn't mean Jesus isn't real, loving, and a good God. C.S. Lewis, the great theologian, wrote an incredible book called The Problem with Pain. The Problem with Pain. If you're struggling in believing that there's a God because of pain and suffering, you need to read that book by C.S. Lewis. People are confused. Some people are confused because they believe a loving Jesus should always allow many different ways to get to God. I mean, if God is really love and Jesus is really love, then any religion should be okay. There should be many paths to God, Islam or Buddhism or Hinduism. And what's interesting about many of the other religions Religions is they say that Jesus was a good man. Some of the religions say that Jesus was a prophet. But I want you to listen to what Jesus said about himself. In John chapter 14 and verse number 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the one who said, I'm the only way to God the Father. And as C.S. Lewis once said, Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic, or Lord. And with all of my heart, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Mary believed that Jesus was Lord. Let's look back at this story in John chapter number 20 and verse number 16, I want you to see this. It says, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Mary realized it was Jesus when he called her name. She had a personal encounter with Jesus that changed everything for her. And today, what some of you need is not more education, not more facts, not more books, not more convincing arguments about Jesus. What some of you need today is an encounter with God. You need the Lord to call you by name. This changed everything for Mary, and it'll change everything for you. And I want you to notice what, what goes on in this scripture in the next verse in John chapter 20, verse 17. Jesus said, do not hold on to me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen, say those next two words with me, the Lord. Come on, come on. I have, Mary said, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he said these things to her. Mary said, I have seen the Lord. Jesus called her by name. She had a personal encounter with the Lord. Let me tell you what changed my life 30 years ago. Because I had a personal encounter with the Lord. You can't argue with me and try to convince me that Jesus isn't Lord. Because I had my own personal encounter with Jesus. A person with an experience with God is never at the mercy of a person with an argument. I've experienced the Lord for myself. I've heard Jesus call me by name. It happened in a football locker room my senior year of high school. I was a confused teenager. I had been sexually, mentally, and verbally abused. And on a Thursday night, and that we woke a football locker room at an FCA gathering, in front of the entire football team. I heard the gospel preached. I heard the good news of Jesus. And with tears streaming down my face, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I made Jesus Christ my Lord. He called me by name. And my life has never been the same since that encounter in that locker room. I'll never forget that night because it changed me. I'll never forget that night that 
personal experience with Jesus that changed me from the inside out. And my prayer today, as you hear some real testimonies from people in our church, these are not actors, these are real people in our church who have had their own personal experience with Jesus and it changed their life. And I'm telling you, if you could ever have a personal experience with Jesus, it'll change your life. My prayer is that today, you would have an experience with Jesus that you will never forget. Oh, like in that football locker room, I'll never forget. And may Jesus touch your heart that you would never forget a personal experience with Jesus. I was already divorced. I wasn't able to see my kids. I just came out of the military. My father and my sister were killed by a drunk driver, and I think I just went from one drug to the next, trying to fill the hole that I had in me. For me, being far from God uh, was being addicted. My wife caught me. Yeah, the low point was breaking her heart and hating myself for it. I ran away from God for a long time, um, and I think that was because of the hurt and the trauma. It was dark, it was depressive. I had a lot of anxiety. I was going out drinking. Um, I was just trying to find relationships, I would say, that would validate me. That's what I was always in search for. With that came a lot of hurt, a lot of shame, a lot of guilt. I had just been dumped from a four-year relationship. I'm holding a 40 caliber pistol in my hands, thinking that I'm ready to check out. I was in the street, I'd been up for days, and I ran into this little blue-haired lady. She asked me if I was hungry. I grabbed my arm, we started walking. We were walking toward a church. I had blamed God for all the wrong things that had happened to me, and I tried to pull away. And she just held on to my arm tight, and she says, don't worry about it, we don't have to talk about Jesus. Just come get something to eat. See, on the hill of Calvary, my Savior bled for me, my Jesus set me free. And look at the wounds that give me life, grace flowing from His side, no greater sacrifice. We visited People's Church Midwest City. Like, I get emotional now, but I felt like I belong somewhere. One of my best friends, she invited me. I did not know that it was going to change my life. Pastor comes on the screen. The first thing he's talking about is shame. Everything he hit on was everything I was feeling. I was baptized February 19th. And it was as though, like, weight was just falling off of me. God has healed me. He's healed me from addiction. He's healed my mind. He's healed my marriage. And I felt like God has washed away my sins. I never felt love like this, the way that I have been loved by God and by His people. See for the freedom He has won. Even death is dead and done. His life has overcome. Say the name above all names Over every broken place He is risen from the grave What He's done What He's done All the glory and the honor To the Son My sins are forgiven My future is heaven I have a wonderful wife. 
I get to see my kids every day. We may be messed up, but we're just as messed up as the next guy. I can testify that God can heal you. If God did it for me, he can do it for you. He said, when you seek me with all of your heart, I will be there. When you call on me, I will be there. I had this fire in my soul to know him, to know more of him, to serve him. You're so much more than your worst day. You're so much more than your worst second. You're so much more than your worst thought. There is nothing that you can ever do wrong that can make God look at you any differently. He loves you. He's waiting for you. He's always going to be waiting for you. You just have to make that first step. is going to have your own experience with God. It's going to change your life. Can I tell you, God is real. I know him for myself. What I'm talking to you about today is not head knowledge. It's not good book knowledge. I've encountered the presence of Jesus and he changed my life. And he wants to do the same for you. Heavenly Father, I pray in these next few moments today 
that people will have an experience with you that they'll never forget, that their sins are forgiven, that they'll become a child of God. They would hear you call them by name because you love us individually. Reach down and rescue somebody. Reach down and save somebody. Reach down and draw near to somebody. Lord, in this world, there's so much pain. I'm talking to people right now. There's some people in pain and they're hurting and they're confused. Life has been hard and they're wondering, God, if you're real, why am I going through what I'm going through? But oh God, in the midst of the pain and the trouble and the trauma, would you reach down and touch their heart? Draw near to them. And Lord, let them know your forgiving, saving power today. In Jesus' name, I pray. And his eyes are just closed and heads are bowed today. And you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. At one of our locations today, you're far from God. You've never given Jesus Christ your life. You've never given him your heart. Today, try Jesus. Today, believe in Jesus. Today, believe that he's the Son of God. And he died on the cross. And three days later, that's what we're celebrating today. He rose from the grave with all power in his hands to forgive you of your sins trust Jesus he's gonna forgive you of your sins there are others of you today that you gave your life to Jesus years ago but you've allowed sin back in and the wrong people back in the wrong habits back in you're living life your way you're going your own way and today you need to rededicate your life back to the Lord you need to commit your life fresh and anew to Jesus and and make Jesus Christ your Lord by rededicating your life back to the Lord today today is your day to get right with God if that's you, as I count to three at every single location, you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Today, you want Jesus to forgive you of your sins. You want to go to heaven, not hell. Serve God, not the devil. Live in peace, not in turmoil. You today want Jesus to call you by name. You want to experience his forgiving power, his grace and his mercy. As I count to three, just shoot your hand high in the air and I'm going to lead you in a prayer to say yes to Jesus. One two, three. Just lift it high right now. Say, Pastor, this is me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. See your hand there. See your hand there. Th see your hand there. Others today. See your hand there. Others. Thank you so much. See your hand there. Others. Others. Just lift it high right now. Others today. Online. Just click the raise your hand button right now. Or just write, that's me in the chat line. That's me in the chat line. Come on. Just lift your hand high. Others today. Others. Midwest City. Northwest Oklahoma City. Edmond. Just lift it high. Mabel Bassett. Just lift your hand high, ladies, right now. Indianapolis. Just raise it high right now. Others today. Uh, you want to give your life to Christ. I'm saying, I see your hand there. Others today. I'm just giving you another moment today. Is there somebody else you want to give your life to Jesus? Today is your day. All the hands that are raised, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. Confess this prayer with your mouth. Believe it in your heart and God's going to wash away your sins. Pray with me right now. Just pray, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that he rose again and today I place my faith and my trust in Jesus. I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior, and I will live for you, Jesus, the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.